the stage, fantastic director Rubaiyat Hossein. We also have a large gathering of the crew at, at Castor with us, so please help me in welcoming uh, sound designer Jacques Peterson. Producer Peter Hildin. Uh, also co-producer Adnan Ahmed. Producer Francois Dachmau. Composer Tin Salheim. And actress Novera Raman. She watched the movie for the first time today. <laughs> Congratulations on Made by Bush. This is a phenomenal film, and we're so grateful that you brought it here to Toronto with us to share for our audience. Uh, this world premiere. <laughs> um, and thank you, Rubaiyat, for this inspiring Bengali female focused story um, that I think will really resonate with our North American and international audiences here. Um, so, this is your third feature, and we are continuing to tell stories about women in Bangladesh. So what made you want to tell this story specifically about workers in the garment factory trying to unionize, and, and uh, who or what was your inspiration? Uh, well, in all of my work, I'm interested in uh, looking at women's um, social and cultural position, because I think the kind of film that I watch, there's a difference of what I watch and the women's lived experiences. So I try to like make films about the women that surround me, women that I am. Um, and my previous film was Under Construction. It's about a middle class actress. And there was a character, a housemaid, who never wants to work in a factory. So I was like, okay, maybe next I will do that. And because it was very far from my own lived experiences, um, I started doing research and I met a woman named Dalia. And she became my inspiration. She helped me write the film. Um, she was there during the rehearsal, um, helping us with the dialogue. She was on the set. She taught the actress how to do the sewing machine. So she became a very big um, part of the film and the events that you see in the film are loosely based off the real life events. That's incredible. And, and I guess, how did you speak with your cast and how did you prepare for these kinds of roles? Like you're talking about learning the machines and everything like that. Uh, and, and, and uh, how did you kind of prepare for this? It was a really long process. We uh, learned how to operate those machines for an entire month. So we'd go in like every day and just work on them for an hour. And it's really hard work. Like your back aches, your feet aches. Like, and you know, it's, it's a very dangerous machine. It's not like the ones that you have in your home. So we did that. Um, we uh, changed our diets because uh, we wanted to put on some weight because you know um, these farmers workers they live on a diet of like like rice and dal rice and dal so we really tried to emulate their lifestyles and um, we also uh, we also tanned <laughs> we wanted to make sure yeah and um, as a part of our rehearsal as a part of our getting into character we would walk with uh, like real garments workers. Um, to the factories every morning at dawn. And and, and at one point, um, the guards, they would just be like, come in, what are you doing here? <laughs> just, we're, like, you're annoying everybody, just go in, like, go to your station. Like, yeah, so it was a very intense experience. It kind of changed my life. Well, there, it's so much then that comes to the authenticity of this film and, it, and that the sounds that surround you with all the machines and, and in the streets and everything. So really talk to the team about how you uh, wanted to create that vision and how you kind of, how that came together. Um, well, Jeff can also talk more about it, but when we were making the film, one of the things that I really wanted was uh, to give you a feeling of being in a factory, or being in that slum, being in the factory. The sound becomes really important yeah. to transport you to that place. And Dhaka has a very violent soundscape, you know? 
you know, the city sound is, yeah. is very violent. And when you're inside a factory, you hear this noise 10 hours a day, you know? So we wanted to give a taste of that. And um, we used all of the sound that we had recorded on the set. You know, we just talked about it. And, you know, another thing is I'd just like to add that we wanted to have the social realist drama, you know, that kind of thing. And so it was very important to have that through real locations, real sound. Yeah, because the uh, amazing uh, film team uh, got so many sound recordings from the city. We were able to design the, the whole film with sounds from the slum and the factories. It's quite amazing. Okay, I'm sure the audience has quite a lot of questions. So I'm going to open it up to the audience here. So, so the question, um, gentlemen, you said in watching a film like this, it really makes them reflect on what's in the closet and how much you spent and how, how that kind of goes back uh, to the workers. And so his question uh, is, what can we do? What is the message, I guess, from the film? Well, the point of the film is to make you aware and then to engage as a consumer. Um, I don't know what you can do. There's so many things that you can do, but at least you can start inquiring. And definitely something that you should not do is say we don't want to buy anything in Bangladesh anymore because the workers don't want that. They want jobs. The factories are empowering them also in a way because these women now have jobs. They earn money. Otherwise, they would have been married in a village or working as a domestic slave in somebody's home. So these jobs are good, but they want better condition. So one of the things that I found in my research is um, it's a very good thing that there's uh, they have the opportunity to unionize because through that they can actually have a voice. Um, they can humanize themselves. You know, they know that okay, there's laws to protect us, so they can negotiate. So for me, I think it's really important to make the workers aware of the laws that are already there to protect them, so they they can actually these women are not victims. You know, that's something I also found in my research that I went in thinking that I would find the marriage as a victim. But the women that I met were so strong, so colorful, vibrant, young. They were laughing. They were having a good life, having a good time, you know. Um, and they had hopes, and they were fighting. So I wanted to actually, in that way, make the film positive. Um, yeah. So don't be so sad. <laughs> Um, I'll just repeat the question. Um, so just the uh, kind of the class difference uh, that's portrayed in the film and then how people, I guess also in Bangladesh, how people will be uh, viewing this and what they will take in, because it hasn't been released yet. <laughs> well, the, the cast and crew come from um, a lot of different social classes. You just see two of them here, or two of them. <laughs> but we had a large cast and crew. And we work together to make this film, and I really don't know how the privileged class will take it. I don't know how the factory owners will take it, but I do have friends who own factories, um, and they don't like to hear about the union because it's trouble for them. Yeah. But we will see when the ladies in Bangladesh will see how they react to it. Any questions? Do you guys want any challenges filming there? Because I know it's so busy. So the question is, uh, what was the biggest challenges you had filming in a city like Dhaka? Well, one of the challenges that we were shooting um, in real locations, and also wanted us to build a set <laughs> in a slum. Uh, but it's, it's very hard to build a set like that. You know, we, we got the whole slum involved. They all play a part in the wedding scene. All the kids become, you know, we wouldn't have had this in a set. So, of course, you have difficulty when you have real locations. Uh, we have all the streets, we have traveling shots. So we did a lot of rehearsals. Uh, and I have such an amazing crew. I'm very grateful to them, um, especially in Bangladesh, the middle of the line crew. They work so hard in like, you know, controlling traffic and maintaining that nobody would look into the camera. We had like a team just really working hard to do that. It was so much hard work and so much screaming. And, you know, and I have to tell the kids in the slum that you're going to go blind if you look at the camera. <laughs> and then the next day, the next day they come back and they're like, oh, I looked at the camera and I'm not blind. <laughs> so I said, it's going to happen over a month. <laughs> so we had to do all sorts of things. To, uh, and then I remember one, one day, the, one of our best boys was sitting on the roof in the slum. 
around, just chasing away crows. Because crows were making sound, which because we were doing location sound. So the crows being, so you know, all sorts of things we had to do in order to shoot um, in real locations with the advantage we got a lot of real people um, involved in the movie. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> but we also had help from the police and stuff. You know, if we were saying that we are filming and they would help us, it's exactly the thing. And Adnan is here, he was kind of like the head of the department and, and traffic control. <laughs> we had a rope that we would pull up and not let people enter, which is quite crazy. But we had, we had very little time to shoot, that's what we Very resourceful. <laughs> uh, the question is, uh, what percentage of the factories are unionized? So the question is, uh, how common is it to run into that kind of obstruction uh, from the government when they're trying to unionize, and uh, are there ways that they can figure out to get around it? Well, the person who helped me write the movie, um, she ran into some more trouble, and she, what she did when she went into the officer's room, she threatened to kill herself in there. Um, so you know, so there was some sort of a blackmail going on. So people do, that's only one story that I know. You know, I don't know many stories, but it's only one that I know that I have followed. But factories are becoming unionized because more and more um, human rights organizations are actually making workers aware about that. You know, they're doing workshops. And especially, you might have known in 2013, there was a building collapse mm -hmm. around Plaza, which killed over a thousand mm -hmm. workers. So things really changed after that. People became more aware. Um, you know, companies became more aware. The government became more aware. So now there has been more unionizing of factories after Rana Plaza. So I think things are actually getting better now. So this is a time to make it think. You know, the workers used to get paid at one point two thousand taka. You know, when I was making the movie, it was five thousand six hundred. I think now it has been raised to. Uh, Nine nine thousand, you know, close to ten thousand. Yeah, close to ten thousand. Now the workers want sixteen thousand. So you see, the pace thing is going up, but it's not just going up on its own. These women are actually uh, mobilizing and you know doing demonstration and struggling for that to happen. Why so is that? Just talking about that, that you can find lots of examples. But I, when you tell a story guess, like this, and uh, you're saying that the attention is the international attention is starting to happen. Um, how did you involve, like this is a big kind of international co-production. Um, you have a French team, a Danish team, and a Portuguese team. Uh, so how did this all kind of come together to get this film made? Well, I, I met Basra in 2016 uh, through a friend, and I had the idea. And then he liked it, and I was like, okay, let's, I was like, okay, I'm gonna make it this summer. <laughs> and he was like, no, let's wait to do it the proper way. Uh, and we actually started working together, and he um, helped me to get a, a script supervisor, and then he, he's the one who made all the other um, connections in the movie. Yes, I made mean, you know, many connections. And did tonight. We met three years and a half ago. And uh, yes, I just wanted to shoot very quickly. Um, but to make a movie takes a long time. It's more or less one year to write, one year to do it in finance, one year to make the movie, and one year to put it in the market. Um, it was three years and a half ago, so the timing was good. And, we still, um, and then, yes, you're trying to find the, the right person for the right, um, to create the right blueprint to make the movie in good conditions. And, um, and it, it was quite easy. Well, I know the process was quite easy to make the game And I know, Rebecca, you were saying, that, well, the, for this film, you, most of your heads of the department are women, and you were very keen to uh, employ women behind the camera and, and to tell the story. So was there any, uh, that you had to wait for the right people to come through, uh, to, to be available to make this film? Well, it's a shame. There is only guys. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I but it's true. <laughs> it was mainly women. The producers are, are mostly men. The producers are all men in the movie. Uh, but no, it's, it's very Later good. Is the Danish producer is <laughs> <You> a guy. <laughs> no, we had a lot of good men also working with us. Um, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, oh. <laughs> I just wanted to say that for me, um, in Bangladesh when I'm making a movie, I'm often the only woman in the room and it's very lonely. And I don't like to be the only woman in the room. And so I want to get other women uh, crew. So the, you know, if I have other head of department, like a woman DP, a woman doing sound, production design, already my Bangladeshi crew is thinking in a different way. Already my female actors are so much more comfortable with their skin. And, you know, they don't have any inclination the way they move. And, you know, it's really, it really helps me to tell my story. And I literally want to go inside behind the camera, like literally. Um, so I, I told Foswa that I wanted to have a woman um, having the hair series of Foswa as a woman doing sound. He said, yes, of course. Um, and then production designer was a woman. Um, the editor was a woman. And also an art director who was in the first film. Um, <laughs> and she had the first film she had gone and gotten married, had a kid. Uh, stopped working and for this film she came back and now she's back in, in a career working. So it was a very good, like a sorority of people. You know, we, we're all friends and we still keep in touch and yeah. Well, thank you very much. I'm sorry we've run out of time. Yes, we're one, one um, I, yeah, continue. Uh, I'm sorry. It's it's a, actually, I'm really, I'm sure or it's very open. <laughs> well, it's it's not the Ministry of Labor, but it, it's it, it is a government it's office. A government. <laughs> we <laughs> shot on Friday <laughs> and Saturday. <laughs> that's very, very well done. Okay, I'm sorry. That's all the time we have for tonight.